Hey everybody, Barry Nadler here with eLearningDeconstructed.com where we create eLearning rock stars. Today we're going to talk about building an animated workflow diagram within PowerPoint. I'm going to talk a little bit about how you can leverage this tool and I'm going to share with you how I've used it in the past in some of my projects. So what exactly is a workflow diagram? Well I'm going to go ahead and show this via animation and then I'll talk about it for a moment. So what you're looking at here is a process. I do a lot of software training, so typically there is a process involved. So you have to do one thing, then you have to do another and another and another. However, the first step might have some sub-steps. The second step might have a couple of sub-steps. Maybe the third step doesn't have a sub-step. And then the last stage has several sub-steps before you can call your process complete. So what this gives you is a way to have some navigation and a way to discuss things that makes a little bit of sense to people. So the other thing you can do to add to this is you can focus their attention on various sections of the workflow diagram. So for example, now we're going to talk about step one and what step one is and then we're going to talk about the sub-step. Then we're going to talk about step two, what the sub-steps are that are part of that. And now we're going to talk about step three and then we would talk about step four and its various sub-steps. So how I've used this in my training is I use it as a navigation tool. What it does is it opens up the process so people can see all the different various steps. It's like a map. So think of it as a map to what you're going to show them and it allows for a navigation where they can click on the different steps and they can be jumped into the course into various areas and then brought back to this workflow diagram. Also, as I go from lesson to lesson to lesson, it's a really good way to say, oh, we're in step one of the workflow. When that's done, I might take them to lesson two and say, okay, now we're in step two of the workflow and here's the things that we're going to talk about. Now we're in the third lesson, which would be step three of the, of the workflow. And then lastly, the fourth lesson might be the um, fourth step of the workflow and then you can go back and show them the whole workflow and say now we're going to do a skill check and we're going to take you through these processes. So it's a way to visualize something that might be an abstract or intangible process. Now something else that you'll notice about this diagram is it's color coded. I did that by design. It's on purpose. That way I can color code my lessons. Everything I do can be coded to these colors and it becomes an extra clue to the learner so they can see where they are. So the way that I did that was I'm going to go ahead and select this text box here and I'm going to go into my drawing tools. Now I have a color scheme set up so when I go to my shape fill I have my various colors here and you'll notice there's various colors up and down the spectrum here. So when I picked my colors that I knew were acceptable I just went up and down the spectrum to select various colors that matched. So now let's talk about this a little bit further as I'm working through my lessons. Remember we were on this slide here and what I did was I put a semi-transparent box on top of the stages of the workflow that I'm not talking about. Why didn't I just show them step one and step two and then leave the others off the screen? Well again we're thinking of this as a map. It allows the learner to put their head around where they're at and they can see I'm at the beginning of the workflow, I'm at the middle of the workflow, I'm down in a sub-step. So like down here, maybe I'm in sub-step two, maybe I'm going to put a white box over the other stages here. So maybe I'm going to take this and I'm going to cover this up and I'm going to say, okay, now we're talking about the last sub-step of step two. So it allows you to just focus the learner's brain on where you are, but they're not lost in a workflow. They can see, oh, I'm almost done or oh my gosh I have all this left to do. Now before we close out this video I wanted to share a little bit about the mechanics of how I built this how you can alter it that sort of thing. So let's say you find out that step three actually does in fact have a sub step. Well what I did was I selected the shape here of a rectangle and then I'm going to just draw it and I'm going to stretch it out here make it work so that it matches now certainly you could copy one of the other boxes, that's not a problem. 
Then I went up to my shape fill, and we know that the top one is blue, so we're just going to come down our spectrum, and we'll follow the pattern and go with the darker one, and there is no outline on the box. Then I would right-click on this and select Edit Text, and in my case, I'm going to call it Sub Step 1. Then I would grab one of these arrows, I would hold down Control, and I would just drag it over. And then I can change that outline to the appropriate blue to match it. And if I want here, there's little connector points. There you go. We can straighten that out a little bit. There you go. And obviously, you would need to copy that and paste it into each of the other um, diagrams. So the other thing that's happening here is there's a series of animations. Now, we talked about animations in a previous video, but there is this animation pane, and you can see as we go through here, I'll just click through this. There's that item, that item, that item, that item, that item. We'll just go through here. They're all there, and they're just one right after the other, and basically what I did was I put fades on the boxes and wipes on the arrows and I wiped down from the box to the box it's going to, or I wiped to the right from this box over to this box. And I went from here down, then I came back up to here, went down, back up to here, went down, and so on. Now on the next slides we have only one thing is animated. There's this white box. This is just a white box that I dropped in here, and it's set up to fade in whenever I choose to. Right now I've got it set for on click so that I can control it in your e-learning you probably wouldn't do that. So you just do that through your whole course and you're good to go. It's really not very complicated. The biggest challenge is to make sure that they all match. So like when we added this extra workflow step it's very likely that you could miss one or two throughout your course if you're using this diagram all over the place. So you want to make sure that the diagram is right. There's one last thing I want to point out. This diagram makes an excellent job aid. We've used that many times where we took it and we turned it into a PDF or we copied it, made it a JPEG or an image and put it in, right into our training guides or our workbooks or um, companion guides. So that's a great idea for how to use this. And again, in that same way, you could use this with the faded box to move yourself around inside that guide as you're talking about the different sections, just highlight the sections you want to point out. So as I said at the beginning, my name is Barry Nadler with eLearningDeconstructed.com where we create eLearning rock stars. I hope you found the information in this video useful and if you liked what you saw, check out our website and see all the other video tutorials and articles that we have for you. Thanks and see you later.